So how did I get interested in consciousness? Well, uh, I was interested in science before I was interested in consciousness. And uh, I heard about this conference that was taking place in San Diego uh, as a teenager, and I went to that. And it turned out to be a conference of scientists who are exploring kind of unanswered questions. And the big one, the big theme at that time was consciousness. And I met the, uh, the dean of the engineering school at Princeton, Bob John, at that time. And uh, he invited me to the lab at Princeton called the Pear Lab, in which they were looking at the relationship between intention and uh, random physical systems. In other words, asking the question in a way, do we live in the matrix? <laughs> uh, what is the mind and can it uh, act beyond the brain, beyond the body, and do stuff outside in the physical world? And the answer, of course, from that research is yes, and it blew my mind. It was so fascinating. And uh, I got this uh, rapid education in not only in scientific uh, modalities, objective scientific research, but also in the sociology of science. Why are some things acceptable to study? Why are some things not acceptable to study? And uh, what is this like scientific two-step necessary to get stuff from research out into the real world? There's evidence that shows that our minds can interact with the physical world in new ways. Well, what is the physical world? Well, it might be a random number generator machine. It could be our bodies, but it could also be technology, right? So the question arose to me is, like, how can we, how can we kind of harness this relationship between mind and reality in a new way and create new technology out of it? For example, we tend to interface with our, our cell phones by uh, tapping the screen. We tend to interface with computers by using keystrokes. Is there a way to connect uh, technologies electronic technologies to our consciousness, our subjective awareness through this mind-matter interaction mechanism.